Welcome to Canadian Merchant Accounts tutorial. We're going to be covering credit card processing 101. In this tutorial, we'll be covering what is a merchant account? Where do you get a merchant account? ISOs versus banks and three tiered pricing. Technically, a merchant account is a contract under which an acquiring bank extends a line of credit to a merchant who wishes to accept payment card transactions of a particular card association brand. Without such a contract, one cannot accept payments by any of the major credit card brands. Basically, it allows a merchant to accept credit cards as a method of payment for their business. Most credit card transactions are sent electronically to merchants bank for authorization. Most credit card transactions also apply to all credit card processing, both retail and internet based transactions. In Canada, if you get a merchant account set up through a bank, one of the sisters credit card processing companies, um, or through an ISO organization or an MSP association. ISO just stands for Independent Selling Organization or, member or MSP stands for Member Service Provider. Some example uh, sister bank associations in Canada would be companies like Moneris, uh, which is a sister company of the Royal Bank and Bank of Montreal, Global Payments, which is associated with CIBC, TD Merchant Services is obviously associated with TD Canada Trust, Chase Payment Tech is associated with Scotiabank, and some ISO or MSP uh, credit card merchant account processors would be in Canada examples like Collective POS, Cardex, Tangerine, Monex, VersaPay, POS West, POS West, etc. There's many, many uh, ISO organizations across Canada. In my opinion, um, some of the pros and cons of using a bank affiliated merchant account uh, would be they can usually deposit your funds within 24 hours um, if you bank with their sister company directly. So if you use Banaris and you bank with BMO or Royal, sometimes they can offer depositing within 24 hours, where if you don't, um, then you would be expecting a 48 hour deposit usually. Some cons would be they're a little bit more difficult to get approved if your financial track record is poor, and sometimes order turnaround time can take a little bit longer. Now when it comes to the ISO organizations, um, that's right, the deposits usually take 48 hours before they hit your account, so it's two business days. Um, they're a little bit more lenient sometimes when you have less than perfect credit to get approval through, as well as they're usually very um, uh, competitive and their turnaround time is quick. Usually you can get an order in about five business days or less, where sometimes with the bank affiliate companies it's you know seven business days and can be right up to two or three weeks. When you're shopping around for credit card processing rates, you need to be aware that discount rates fall under basically three uh, categories. And this is the three tiered pricing system for Visa and MasterCard. And those three categories basically are the first one is qualified rates, the second is mid qualified rates, and the third is non qualified rates. The biggest mistake most small business owners make is they take the advertised qualified rate at face value from credit card processors as the true rate, when often this is not the case. So let's look at each individual one of these rates. The qualified rate is usually a card present swipe. It's a face-to-face -face transaction, and it's usually considered a uh, card that doesn't have any rewards associated with, just a basic standard credit card, and it's usually applied to retail situations. Mid uh, qualified rates um, are usually keyed into the terminal if you have a retail location. So if the, the card's not swiping or you're taking over the phone order and you key it in, that would be considered a mid qualified rate. Um, also, all the special kind of cards like rewards cards that have special air mile rewards or business cards or corporate cards, etc., all fall underneath the mid qualified rate. And so uh, the card processors pay more money, there's more charge and interchange to the credit card processors from Visa and MasterCard, and therefore they pass along the extra charge to you. Um, usually the interchange rate can be, you know, three basis points to five basis points higher in interchange, 
And credit card processors will, of course, mark that up to you anywhere from, you know, seven basis points right up to, you know, full percent and a half on top of whatever um, your normal qualified rate would be. So, you know, you could possibly be quoted, you know, one point, let's say, seven, five percent on your uh, qualified rate and you do a non-qualified or mid-qualified transaction and the interchange change makes that into, you know, with 50 basis points higher, 2.25 is what's charged to the card processor. And therefore, they're going to mark it up a little bit on top of that. So you'll probably pay 2.75 or 2.5% on that markup. Now, if we look at a non-qualified rate, there usually that's when there's no uh, verification that's done. There's also, you know, special kind of cards. There's very special uh, internet transactions will fall underneath that. Or some of these special business cards as well can sometimes fall underneath non-qualified. Um, sometimes when businesses don't do batches on the same day, that can also end up making your transactions non-qualified. So it's important that you at least batch out once a day. And you'll find that the interchange uh, upmark to the card process can be, you know, anywhere from 2 to 2.5% higher on uh, nine uh, qualified rates it can be that high therefore you can see how important it is that you as a merchant understand what type of transactions you'll be processing and not to take just the qualified or the card present rates at face value what's being advertised to you out there otherwise you may be greatly surprised with your bills or you may make a poor decision when it comes to deciding what merchant account provider will be best for your business needs well, this uh, concludes the Merchant Account Tutorial of Credit Card Processing 101. Um, if you'd like to learn uh, the 15 essential questions every small business owner must ask before choosing a merchant account provider, just head over to uh, CanadianMerchantAccountServices.com and that's Canadian-Merchant-Account-Services.com.